Hey guys, this is EJ Allen with the Wolverine.com, and we're back with another episode of the Wolverine Live Recruiting Show. I do want to remind you guys to subscribe to the Wolverine.com for just $29.99 uh, for six months. Also, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is completely free. We are uh, answering your questions tonight for free, but you can hit that little square box at the bottom of the chat box that has the dollar symbol uh sometimes it shows up as a donate button and submit your super chat and you can skip the line obviously michigan is hosting quite a few big time visitors so we'll have a ton to talk about in today's show and it already looks like we have a question but before I answer, guys, I did not realize that my laptop was about to die. So bear with me. Ugh. All right. Um, sorry, guys. Having to plug this in really quick. Um, let's go ahead and go down to Jeff M. Ooh. All right. Looks like we finally got that. Sort it out. Jeff M says, if you could pick any five remaining class of 2024 players for Michigan, who would they be and why? Please restrict your list to players who are seriously considering Michigan. Okay, so if I'm picking five remaining players in the 2024 recruiting class, um, that are still seriously considering Michigan. So I'm going to set the guidelines as they have to have an official visit scheduled or they have to be already coming in for an official visit. So I'm going to say Justin Scott's the obvious one. Um, Five-star defensive lineman out of Chicago. I think that he's just such a dominant force in the middle he can be the guy that's just an absolute game changer in the interior of the defensive line he's ranked as the number eight overall prospect number two defensive lineman in the country he is set to make his official visit this weekend and i'm not very confident there but he is at least giving michigan another chance remember he did visit michigan in the fall for the game against Michigan State. Really had a good time on campus, but Miami has shot up as the favorite. You know, they have a lot of things to offer that Michigan doesn't necessarily do. Um, Notre Dame's been a long time contender. Georgia has really risen up in his recruitment as well. So, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle for Michigan to land Justin Scott, but he would definitely be the guy on my list um number two on the list would be ryan wingo who's also coming in for his official visit this weekend uh wingo is another five-star prospect and another guy that michigan has a lot of work to do with um his profile uh shows that he's a five-star number 20 number 22 overall prospect nationally this cycle uh look Michigan has some quality wide receivers on the board. They have a commitment from Channing Goodwin. Uh, the other guys on the board, like Jordan Ship and Amarion Stewart, uh, are very quality receivers. They're all kind of in that same rankings range in that uh, low four-star, just a little outside the top 300. But when you look at Wingo, I mean, you have a top 25 player nationally, a prospect that could be a game changer right away and potentially even start as a true freshman. So I think Wingo would help open up the offense a ton. Right now, again, Michigan's set to host him for an official visit this weekend, but going to be an uphill battle there with Georgia in the lead on the on three recruiting prediction machine. It would be surprising if he didn't side with the Bulldogs at the end of the day. So we've gone with two long shots. And for everybody just joining, we are on this first question, Jeff, asking me to name the uh, five players that I would pick to close out the 2024 class. The third pick would be Darian Mayo, 
uh, top 100 edge out of only good counsel. You'd be hard pressed to find any guy on the board that has more upside than Darian Mayo. He, I did my 10 best prospects I saw live in the month of May, and Darian Mayo was number one. I mean, he's a legit, what is he listed at? Six foot eight, 250 pounds. He's added some really good weight to his frame. Um, you see on threes a little higher on him than the industry ranking. I'm not sure what 24 sevens doing, giving him a three star, but I think he's a top 100 prospect guy all the way. Just upside a uh, guy that can be developed into that next first round draft pick. If he commits to a place like Michigan, Michigan has the lead on the on three recruiting prediction machine, but it's definitely not a guarantee. Ohio state, is recruiting him extremely hard and has made a big impression. Clemson hosted him for an official visit over the weekend and, and moved up um, after you know his time there. So, yeah, I feel like Michigan has some work to do. They have him last on June 23rd, which is a big positive. But if they are able to land Derry and Mayo, I mean, that would be just such a massive win. Um, you know, there are a lot of good names on the edge board right now, a lot of options, whether it's Devin Baxter, or Dominic Nichols, or uh, Brian Robinson, Elias Rudolph, et cetera, Jacob Smith. But at the end of the day, I think Mayo is the clear top dog on the edge board. Um, next for me would be Aaron Scott, top 100 cornerback um, out of Ohio. When you look at the corner board right now, a lot of this cycle has been Aaron Scott and Bryce West. And I think I've always said that Michigan has a better shot to land Aaron Scott than they do Bryce West. Um, you do see the on three prediction machine heavily favoring Ohio state, but Michigan has done a good, really good job in this recruitment. I think they've done a better job in this recruitment than that of West. Uh, Scott has a great personal relationship with Steve Klinkscale. Michigan's recruiting movement in Ohio is very real. You saw them land Jordan Marshall earlier this cycle, several Ohio kids in the class, Luke Hamilton, um, Ben Roebuck, Ted Hammond. All those guys have been very instrumental in helping uh, Michigan recruit Aaron Scott. Um, right at about six foot, 165 pounds, good speed, good length, just a really excellent cover corner. You see he's ranked as the number 12 overall recruit in the country by on three in the number two corner. So he'd be in the elite land at that position, um, at a position of need. And not only that, if you miss on Aaron Scott, if you're Michigan and you miss on Aaron Scott, then there are a lot of questions when it comes to the corner board. Um, you know, let's just assume that Bryce West goes to Ohio State and then let's say they do miss on Aaron Scott. The next guys up are Tariah Nichols and Andre Evans. Evans has exploded with offers, Alabama, Georgia entering the picture this week. So he's definitely not a slam dunk. Tariah Nichols, I think, would lean towards Michigan, but, you know, still some heavy competition there. And then after that, it just kind of is a big swath of names. You have Jameer Grimsley, who's coming in, another top 100 corner, but a little more of a long shot there. And, yeah, it would uh, it would create a very cloudy picture if you miss on Aaron Scott. So I think he's a really, really important recruit. And the last guy that comes to mind is uh, my personal favorite recruit, Aaron Childs on 300 linebacker out of only good counsel, teammate of Darian Mayo, who we just talked about. Uh, Childs coming in for his official visit on June 23rd. Michigan has the Lead on the on three prediction machine. I've had my pick in for several months and still feel confident. You see, he's ranked as the number 101 overall recruit nationally. So just outside the top 100, I think he should be in there. Um, man, when you look at Aaron Childs, he's an, he's a clone of junior Colson. Like he's a guy that just fits the defense so well. He can run sideline to sideline. He's a big dude at six foot three, 220 pounds. He can drop back in coverage. He can blitz off the edge. He's just so versatile in what he can do in Jesse Minter's scheme. And I think he's kind of that plug and play replacement for J 
Junior Colson if he makes the leap to the NFL this year. So Child's a super important recruit for Michigan as well. So good question from Jeff M to start us off. Let's go ahead and get to some of our other questions, guys. And if you want to skip the line, make sure to hit that little donate button and or the little dollar sign and skip the line with a super chat. That money goes directly to our travel budget. Um, next question comes from Go Glue 81 and he says, how are we looking for Jameer Grimsley and Daniel Hill? And are we losing real ground on Taylor Tatum or was it just after a visit high? Um, let's go ahead and start off with Jameer Grimsley, top 100 cornerback out of Florida. I had a chance to visit with him this offseason when I made a swing through the Sunshine State. On three is the highest on him out of any service, has him ranked as the number 77 overall recruit. Um, when you look at the on three recruiting prediction machine, Florida State has the lead there. Alabama is next. I know Florida is very involved as well. But Grimsley really likes two Big Ten schools, Michigan and Penn State. Now, he's visited all these other schools. He has not yet made a visit to Michigan. So I think We'll know a lot more about Grimsley after that June 23rd OV. I've called him a bit of a long shot, but I think if Michigan really impresses him on the official visit, they could become more of a dark horse candidate. I do think it's more likely he stays in the Southeast than leaves the region, uh, but Michigan has done a really good job of recruiting him. You have to give some props to Steve Klingscale for securing one of Grimsley's June official visits. Um Daniel Hill is an on three line, a 300 linebacker out of Mississippi. But uh, yeah, I don't really think there's a ton to talk about when it comes to Hill. Uh, Chris Partridge extended an offer shortly after arriving at Michigan. He's never visited. There's no official visit scheduled. So I would expect him to stay down south. I know he just named Michigan in his top eight. But again, nothing really there on my end. Um, and then Taylor Tatum. Uh, is Michigan losing real ground or was it just a visit high? And, you know, our next question, KS also asked, what's the insight on Taylor Tatum? Uh, look, USC has the lead on the on three recruiting prediction machine. I think the Trojans did a fantastic job on his official visit there over the weekend. Tatum really vibed well with the staff, with the players there, the baseball program made a strong impression on him. Um, something that a lot of people don't talk about is Taylor Tatum being from East Texas, which is a really tight knit region in the Lone Star state. He grew up looking up to Keontae Ingram, who's also from the area currently plays for the Arizona Cardinals played running back at USC I think that's definitely a help for USC as well. So, yeah, I think the USC hype is pretty real, man. Uh, with Michigan bringing in Micah Kaapana this weekend, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the Wolverines just press for Kaapana and get him in the class. Uh, as much as I would love Taylor Tatum uh, to side with Michigan just because he's one of my favorite guys, I absolutely love the talent. I love the kid. I mean, he's the number one ranked running back in the country when you look at the industry ranking and would be such a dynamic duo with Jordan Marshall, but it's always tough to get two top 100 running backs in one class. I think my card is a big fan of Kaapana and I would say Kaapana is the most likely running back to end up in the class as of today. Now, if Kaapana doesn't secure his spot and we move on to next week where Darian Dupree's coming on and we, still don't get a commitment uh, from any running back, then, you know, you get to June 23rd and Taylor Tatum's still scheduled to come in, then, yeah, you just keep recruiting him and keep pushing for him and see what happens. But uh, as things stand right now, I would say it's likely Tatum heads to USC. It's likely that Michigan uh, makes a push for a cop on a, and that he'll likely be the second running back in the class. Um, let's go down to... The gemologist, how about this transfer guy from Massachusetts? I don't handle transfers. That is the team guys. I only do recruiting. But, um, you know, I can tell you that Michigan obviously has a need for some cornerback depth. 
Um, I covered several of the guys that are obviously on the roster right now. I think Jair Hill is an intriguing option to potentially get significant time as a true freshman. Amarion Walker was obviously the talk of the offseason, but man, when I saw Amarion Walker as a high school recruit, I loved his testing numbers way more than I loved watching him play football. So I think when it comes to Walker, it's a lot of upside. So it's nice to get in a guy from the transfer portal that has experience, that can add some depth, that can potentially compete for a starting job. I mean, I also really like Jaden McBurrows coming out of high school, but not sure where he's at from a health standpoint after suffering a torn ACL last year. So obviously makes sense. And, uh, you know, Wallace has some familiarity with Chris Partridge. So I think that will help as well. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a quick break to thank one of our sponsors. We want to shout out um, Lewis Jewelers on the Wednesday night recruiting show, a longtime partner of the Wolverine. Simple question, guys. Have you taken care of that gift for your special woman in your life? If the answer is no, then great news. Lewis Jewelers can help. It's stress-free and easy working with one of their non-commissioned expert trusted advisors, finding that perfect diamond. So stop by today, guys, and take care of the wives, mothers, and grandmothers in your lives, Lewis Jewelers, your diamond store, and so much more since 1921. Visit them at their new location, 300 South Maple Road, Ann Arbor, or online at lewisjewelers.com. That's lewisjewelers.com, where Ann Arbor and the world gets engaged. Um, and if you don't have a special woman in your life, you can always just get yourself a gift. They have some dog tags and other cool jewelry items if you're into that type of stuff. All right, let's go ahead and go down to Aaron Bryant. Has anyone had stats like Cabana or Capana? Man, if, if Michigan lands Micah Capana, that's going to be pretty confusing when talking about Cole Cabana. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, obviously Micah Capana has – Really good stats. He plays at a power program like La at Las Vegas Bishop Gorman, which plays some top competition nationally, the top competition in the city of Las Vegas, which is on the rise when it comes to football recruiting talent. You know, he's ranked as the number 765 overall prospect nationally. So kind of a little bit of an afterthought when it comes to a rankings perspective. But with him playing on such a big stage, uh, if he has another big year, going into his senior season, I mean, I think he could easily skyrocket up the rankings. This is a guy that Mike Hart evaluated and offered on the spot. Uh, they love his speed. I think, you know, if you can't get Taylor Tatum, getting a guy like Micah Kaapana, who's a speedy back and would complement Jordan Marshall well, is still a nice win. We have a $5 super chat coming in from Jason Moose, and he asks, if Taylor Tatum was so sure about USC, he would have canceled all of his other official visits with the other schools already. The guy who said USC was a homer and is 55% confident. Um, yeah, look, I mean, it could easily be a visit high. Look, Taylor Tatum's always been a really calculated kid, right? The way he does interviews, the way he set up his recruiting timeline, the way he's done his official visit schedule – has all been very calculated. Now, I do believe that there is definitely some truth behind the USC pick. Um, like I said, I would give USC the edge. And if you consider Scott Trader a USC homer because he's been on that beat for like 50 years, no offense to Scott, then I did talk to our former employee at the Wolverine, Marshall Levinson, who is definitely not a homer. Uh, and is now working over at the USC on three site. Um, Marshall shared similar sentiments as Scott. Uh, Marshall is obviously covering USC from the state of Texas. He's deeply plugged in in the Lone Star State, and he is also buying the USC lead. So, look, I mean, I think it's great if Tatum continues to hold off and does make his official visit to Michigan, which is still the plan as of right now. But like I said, I'm not sure that Mike Hart just waits for that to happen. I think 
if Micah, if they push for Micah Kaapana this weekend, which I think they will, and Kaapana really enjoys the visit and gives a commitment or tries to give a commitment or gives a silent commitment, I don't think Michigan would deny it. I think they'd accept it regardless of Taylor Tatum. Like, I really do think they like Kapana that much. So, yeah, um, you know, I, I, I know the crystal ball or the on three prediction was with a low percentage, but I do buy the USC hype right now. Um, let's go ahead and go down to KS. And he says, any word on who they're going to bring on the recruiting department after the Shemi debacle to fill that position? No word on who they're bringing in to fill that position. Um, obviously, that was a very controversial situation. I think Michigan still kind of figuring out what to do, as Jim Harbaugh said at the satellite camp last week. They have a new company to vet potential new hires. So I think they're just taking their time and figuring out what to do on that end. But keep in mind that Shemi Schembechler was going to be more of a scout than an actual recruiting department guy who is going to be a person that was more involved in the film room and evaluation process as opposed to actually helping out more as an on-campus recruit. Uh, let's go down to Indigo Ronan, and he says, thoughts on Boo Carter and Darian Mayo to Michigan. When it comes to Boo, Boo Carter, four-star defensive back, out of the state of Tennessee. I would give the edge to Tennessee right now. I think they're going to be tough to beat out. It's the home state program. They obviously have been very aggressive on the NIL front. At the same time, Boo Carter has a really strong relationship with the Michigan staff, particularly Steve Klingscale. If there is one coach that can overcome Tennessee, it is Klink at Michigan. Carter has also bonded really well with some of the Michigan commits, including Jacob Odin. Um, he is set to make his official visit this weekend. This will mark the first time his parents come in for an OV, so that could definitely help as well. Michigan always does extremely well with recruits' parents on the academic side and life after football side, as well as the development and the nutrition program. So, yeah, I, I think Michigan's still in it here. Obviously, Carter is set to make a decision this month, but – I do think Tennessee has the edge, and you see the Volunteers have a 92.2% chance of landing him on the on three recruiting prediction machine. Um, Darian Mayo, we talked a little bit about earlier, but just to kind of recap my thoughts, um, I think Michigan is right up there for him. I've always said it would be more of a Michigan-Ohio State recruiting battle, but Clemson did a really nice job this weekend. I think Clemson is right up there as well. Um Michigan obviously gets him last on June 23rd for his official visit. So I think that's going to be a big benefit for the Wolverines. I wouldn't dismiss Ohio State. He grew up with an affinity for the Buckeyes. He has a great relationship with uh, lead recruiter Larry Johnson, who does a fantastic job of getting guys along the defensive line. So I think it's a really heated recruiting battle. I think it's really going to come down to these official visits. I wouldn't you know, make a prediction one way or the other right now. You see Michigan has a lead on the on three recruiting prediction machine, but I think it's very, very close. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to Go Blue 81 who says, who this weekend do we have a chance to hit it out of the ballpark with? How many commitment watches do, you, do we have this weekend? I mean, obviously Michigan's going to have a chance to hit it out of the park with all the guys coming in. I think some guys that they can potentially trend up for that they're might maybe not trending up for right now. Uh, Jordan Johnson Rubel, four-star safety out of IMG Academy. Uh, I mentioned him on the Tuesday night show yesterday. So if you didn't have a chance to watch that show with uh, my co-host Zach Libby, I would definitely encourage it. Uh, I was not struggling as much as I am today, a uh, little under the weather. But, um, yeah, Jordan Johnson, Rubel, man, you see Texas has a commanding lead on the on three recruiting prediction machine. But first time I ever met Johnson, Rubel, man, I just felt like he was a Michigan kid. I love what he brings to the table on the field. You know, personally, he is such a high character 
dude. Like he cares about academics. He cares about life after football. He cares about development, all things that are really strong selling points uh, at Michigan. I think he'll really fall in love with the, with the culture when he makes his official visit this weekend. When he previously made his unofficial visit, uh, it was more of a quick visit. This will be a chance for him to really dive deep into the program. This will also be his mother's first time on campus. So I think Johnson Rubel is definitely a guy they can move up with. And as far as, you know, some of the other guys, I think, you know, Boo Carter right now, obviously we just talked about is a Tennessee Michigan battle. That's a kid that maybe they make that Tennessee lead, you know, a lot closer. Maybe they overtake Tennessee. So I think they'll have a chance to really move the needle with Boo Carter as well. And then how many commitment watches do we have this weekend? Um, some potential options are David Palipale, who's the uh, thumbnail for today's show. Uh, with David Palipale, I recently put in an on three prediction for him. I wouldn't be surprised if he jumps in the class. He just took an official visit to Penn State last weekend. They really sold him hard on staying closer to home. But Polly Polly is a kid that just fits the Michigan culture. He loves the way Michigan develops defensive linemen. He loves the scheme. He thinks he can be a great fit uh, in what Jesse Minter does with the defense. He's a guy being recruited as a nose, but he can also play the three technique. I've compared him to Mason Graham. Um, he's never really had a true set decision timeline other than just saying it'll come at some point this summer. But I think if Michigan – really wows him and his family this weekend this will be the first time his entire family is there together then i do think Polly Polly is a potential um commitment watch guy i think micah kapana again is a potential commit watch guy with things maybe not necessarily trending towards taylor tatum i don't think that michigan would pass up on micah kapana um aside from that i would say owen wayful is definitely a commitment watch guy. Um, recent Notre Dame decommit is now on the open market. Michigan's the only school he has an official set with. I would actually be surprised if Michigan didn't close with Owen Wafel in the near future. Um, you know, he's really underrated as a defensive lineman, as is Polly Polly. Those would be two quality lands for sure. Uh, I know Amarion Stewart isn't going to commit this weekend for star wide receiver out of Chicago, but he has set a decision date for June 16th. I'm feeling really confident in my prediction there as long as everything goes well this weekend. So those are two, those are some of the guys that uh, definitely come to mind. Let's go ahead and go down to Marcel Woods, who comes in with a super chat. Any thoughts on recruits? We are looking to flip. Um, not a lot of flip candidates right now. Owen Wafel was obviously one, but he decommitted from Notre Dame, so he's not necessarily a flip anymore. I would say Georgia commit Jalen Hayward is one to continue to monitor. Michigan still wants a high-level safety in this class. Jalen Hayward has expressed some interest. I actually exchanged some DMs with him the other day, and he told me that he's still looking to make an OV to Michigan. Um so I think he's definitely a guy to watch. Uh, I saw him in seven on seven this off season. He definitely looks the part of a guy that can be that elite safety he can also play some corner as well. So I think Jalen Hayward would be one to monitor, but obviously he would be an extremely tough flip from the Bulldogs. So uh, it looks like we are running low on time guys. Uh, we have hit the 29 and a half minute mark. Let's go ahead and do rapid fire. David DeLees says, I don't hear about Mark East Lightfoot anymore. Are we completely out on him? Yes. Butter XO says, what is the early look on the five stars in 2025 like DJ Pickett and David Sanders? Really like where Michigan stands with DJ Pickett. He told me his top two early on are Michigan and Georgia. He's set to be back for another visit this month. Michigan's been working hard to get David Sanders in for an unofficial. I think he is likely to stay south, but with uh, his teammates obviously committed to Michigan, Jaden Davis, Channing Goodwin, and Goodwin's dad, Jonathan Goodwin, being a former Michigan 
offensive lineman is now his position coach at his high school. I think all that will help. So we'll see how things play out with David Sanders. Let's go down to uh, David Deleese. We already answered Marquise Lightfoot. Uh, Darion Dupree is still set to come in for his OV on June 16th, but I think it's likely that he ends up at Wisconsin. I think that was our last question. Oh, no, we do have one more. Thanks to our producer, Megan, for bringing that up. Hearing anything on how Michigan's current quarterback room is shaping up. So I only cover recruiting, but uh, obviously JJ is the man for this year. And after that, it'll be interesting to see how some of the other guys develop. Obviously, Davis Warren is really, really intriguing. Alex Orgy is just a freak of an athlete. You know, whether he stays at quarterback or not, I think there's a spot on the team for him somewhere. I think he has a chance to be an impact player at whatever he develops at. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining me. We will have a lot of coverage over at the Wolverine.com throughout the weekend. So make sure to subscribe for just $29.99 for six months. Also be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, apologies for me being on under the weather and struggling today. Hopefully we have a better show next week, and I think we will because Michigan should have some good news. So stay locked in for the latest on everything Michigan. <laughs>